What's up, riders? It's good to see you today. We are going to be going over how to explain your thinking that you may have already had and just left it there on the table. So when we look at this picture right here, this graphic of the radiant boy, it's hard for us to know exactly what's going on. I have some special knowledge, so I know what's going on here, and I know what the thinking is. But really, we need to have to, it explained to us. It would be really challenging for us to figure out what is actually the intention of the thoughts here in this beautiful graphic, where it looks like a teddy bear is getting tortured. I'm kidding. But if we look around the outside, you'll notice there are arrows. Those arrows are going from the early on to the story to later. If you look closely, you'd see it said bad and good. And the beginning, it says all love is all he needs. And so really this thinking is talking about how from the beginning of the story, this character changes from being kind of a bad kid to a good kid at the end. And love and somehow is related to this. But that thinking needs to be explained. If we were to look at this graphic, we would have some similar thoughts. We'd say, boy, we have some good character traits. Matilda is there in the middle, so these must be sort of like connections of hers, people that she somehow knows, and they must be sort of secondary characters in the story, with Matilda being the protagonist. Other than that, it's hard to get a lot from it, and so we need that extra explanation because right here this is good thinking we see all these character traits that have been noticed by the reader but we can't say more so today we are going to understand that we expect to come up with new ideas it's not something that just randomly happens and it's not something that we're hoping for we expect to have new ideas each time we're in our journal sometimes though those new ideas like we saw with those two examples are just hanging out. But these big ideas need to be explained. They can't just hang out. That we have to develop them further. And in order to develop those ideas, we have to free write. Free writing helps us to explain what's going on. So, looking at this example. The pictures and notes. Have we explained what's really going on? Take a moment to look at it. In fact, you might need to take a moment longer than I'm willing to be patient here in the video and wait for you. So like 30 seconds, I'd pause the video if I were you, because I'm about to go on right now. So have I explained it? Hmm. I'd say no. I've got some great ideas here. It says that there's a um, horse on the farm, and when they're on the farm, they're peaceful and happy. And there's a picture of them on the, the right side with flowers. And they say they work hard, they're safe, and people love the horse. Down below, there's a, a horse in the middle of a battle, it looks like. And there are shells and grenades going off, and the horse isn't safe and gets wounded, and everything is different. I'm assuming that this is the same horse. And probably that the horse goes from being happy to not as happy during war. That's kind of all that I'm sure about. However, this was what my intention was when I was creating that graphic and notes. These are the thoughts that I would have had as I was sketching. War Horse, the novel, is a novel written from the perspective of a horse that was written into many battles during World War I. Last night, I thought how peaceful it was for the horse before the war. And then I was thinking about how I learned that horses suffer a lot in battle and they get wild. I started getting the idea that war horses, that war horse shows not just how horses get hurt, but how there are other effects people don't even think about. Animals get hurt, and innocent people who are just living there get hurt too. War causes a lot of suffering to innocents. That could be one of my big ideas. Ah, so in other words, looking back, seeing that sketch, these were the thoughts that I would have had while I was sketching. That was my intent to put these thoughts in there, but it's not clear enough to you, the reader. 
So if we look back, have I explained? No. Now looking at it, does it make more sense? Yes. So check out this next page. On this next page, I'm going to show you what your writing would look like explained. Your thinking from the previous page where there was the pictures of the horses and the notes, this is how we could go back and explain what our thinking was at the time. And notice how it sounds like partner talk. The reason I drew the horse is that the horse shows how much suffering war causes. At the beginning of the story, he lives an idyllic life on the farm. I surrounded him with flowers to show all good. I was sort of making him a symbol of goodness. Innocence, really. When the war comes, there aren't flowers anymore, just shells and grenades, and he is hurt. Not just physically, but his spirit is hurt. It's like war changes everything. So, if I was talking to my partner right now, this is what I would have said when I looked back at this part of my text, my journal, and realized I hadn't really explained my thinking here. So, the steps to free write, which is what I just showed you, that was my free writing, are what was I thinking when I made the page? And have I already captured some of that thinking? So that thinking had to say, do with flowers for me and peace. So then what's the new idea that I'm forming? And that's what we want to get down on the page. You can answer those questions to help you guide your thinking. Or if you feel like you're just ready to free write, after you free wrote, check back and see if you really did answer these questions. Now, if you were in my class right now, we would be doing a little partner time. So instead, you're just gonna do this on your own. You're gonna find a page that you could have explained your thinking. It could be a graphic, like a pressure map, a timeline, a character web, anything like that. Or it could just be a page where you had tons of notes. You didn't draw any pictures, you didn't draw anything at all, but you had lots of notes. You might have some thinking, but we never went further. We didn't explain really what our thoughts were. Now, these are the steps again we're gonna follow. So find that part, when you found it, highlight it, and then below, still highlighted, or dated, or both, both, practice. Answering these questions, or slash free writing, to help explain what your thoughts were at the time and what you're thinking now. Remember, we wanna go further than just, well, I think that Harry doesn't like Malfoy. Yeah, we know. We want it to go beyond just like story arc as far as th I think this is happening in the story right now. Push yourself further to help or to possibly make connections to real life or connections to yourself or big ideas about life. That's where the real money is at as far as thinking goes. Now, if you were doing this, I'd pause the video before we went any further. So I'm gonna wait for a second to let you pause right now. So we're back and the, the remi reminder for yourself is that the rest of your time, you should be looking at these ways to write powerfully about your reading. These four things are gonna take your quality of writing about reading higher. So I would have this in front of you as you're working. Now, if I was you, I'd pause for probably 20 minutes and then come back to this video. But guess what? I'm not gonna make a 20 minute pause in the middle of my video. What? I know, right? Obviously I'm not. So, pause it. But we're gonna keep going. So. One thing that I think is really powerful is highlighting what's going on with what you record. In this example from one of my students, which I love, love, love this example, the blue is what I went back through and kind of highlighted roughly as like, hey, these are some thoughts that are going on. Some of the parts in the middle absolutely could be thoughts or details because it would be great if this writer had been more intentional about putting page numbers with some of the things they paraphrased. But take this for what it is, like a pretzel. 
like all great pretzels, they weave together. Could you imagine a pretzel that didn't actually weave together? I think it would be called a breadstick. Anyways, here you can see how they start with their thought. They actually started with thinking, and then they asked a question, and then they had details, and then they asked a question, and then they had thinking, and then they had details, and then they had more details, and then they had lots of thinking. And it goes back and forth like that. And it's nice for you to see it, and it's, it's nice for me, your teacher, to see it. The thing I really want to point out to you is how they get to the bottom last two sentences and have some amazing thinking that I hope you have too. In the yellow at the bottom, it says, how does this relate to the real world? What a great question. Amazing. Most times people have a conflict that they must choose a side on. Mm. Having to choose sides. That's something that we could be developing into a theme, a theme for the story that maybe later on you can make into a chapter for your companion guide. I would, if I was you, take a moment to go back through and read the work that you've done today, these last 20 minutes, and see if you can highlight the details, thinking, and I think questions as well that helped push you further. So I'd again, pause your video so you could do that. Now, here's a great example of what you're working towards. This is a table of contents. This is a table of contents for the Hunger Games. And notice a couple of things. One is this chapter two, repressive regimes and rebellions. Other than being great alliteration, this chapter is great thinking, deep thinking about life. The question is, could the Hunger Games really happen? Whoa, I read them. I never thought that. I was like, yeah, this would never happen. Mm, could it? It's something that I'm interested to actually read about. Maybe I'll get this companion guide. In addition, we have tributes, weapons. So we have lots of fine details in there that you should be collecting as well from your stories. So a final couple thoughts. I know that we've w touched on a lot of things. Don't forget that we want to analyze evidence. Evidence as in details from the text, like quotes that you've found. These should not look unfamiliar to you. You may have already used them this year in your argument essay, possibly about competitive sports, or you might have used these kinds of transition phrases for your literary essay that you wrote previously, as in like sixth grade, possibly. This is how you follow evidence up to explain what's really going on in that evidence. And finally, do yourself and me a favor. Cite your evidence. It was actually part of the very first thing we wrote on powerful writing about reading. And that's record and cite, record and cite. Not record details, it's record and cite important details. So right here we can see Collins, 2008, page five. So last name of the author, year is published, and the page you found this on. So this is done for a detail that was just paraphrased, and this is also done for a quotation. Make sure you're doing that. When it comes time to make those companion guides, this is gonna help you so much, I can't even explain it in a 10 minute video. Hopefully it was 10 minutes, and until I see you next time, happy writing.